Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Sagittarius for December 2018. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, check out my blog and my other wealth of resources there, including the link to sign up for a reading with me. I am off of my sabbatical, I'm taking on new clients for readings, so you can see that at AnnieHelpsYou.com. So what's going on in the month of December? This is our month, okay? So we wait all year for these energies to get into Sagittarius. In November, that started, started in a big way because Jupiter got into Sagittarius in November. And of course you can see I'm all smiles about that because I'm a Sagittarius. But I don't think you have to be a Sagittarius to be excited about Jupiter being in Sag or to be excited about the personal planets moving deeper into Sagittarius because Sag energy brings this buoyant, optimistic, um, expanded, hopeful energy. It brings lots of busyness, lots of running around all over the place. And I talked about in November, if you haven't listened to my November report, then definitely go back and do that because I talk about Jupiter's timing for moving into different placements in the chart and some other implications of Jupiter's transit. I'm just going to touch lightly on some of those things here. You can get a more in-depth um, review on that in November's report. But what I will definitely go into um, a lot of details for Sag. So I had the question several times from the reading last month. I'm a middle or late degree placement. This is, this is what the question was. I'm a middle or late degree placement. Do I have to wait for Jupiter's blessings? Okay, so the answer is no. Okay, so I'm sorry if anything that I said made you think that you have to wait. What I was saying is that middle and late degree placements have to wait for Jupiter to exactly hit their placement. But that doesn't mean you have to wait for that time for Jupiter to start bringing blessings. I'm a Sag, as I told you, and even in October, I've had major showings, major showings of Jupiter moving into our sign. So no, you don't have to wait for the blessings just by the time it gets to cross over your, you know, make um, cross over your Sag placement, then it is just more energy. Okay, so this is a, a month of excess, a year of excess. All the things that make us saggy are going to be expanded a million fold. It's going to be very difficult to stay grounded. I'm concerned I'm going to fall off my chair as I'm talking to you because it's just, it's so exciting. Okay, so we really have to implement our grounding exercises this month and for the next year because we are really ready for liftoff. You know, this is really just, um, all about like it's off the charts you know <laughs> so because i had such a wonderful um well really unanimous feedback about using the visual charts because i always talk about early middle and late degree sag placements how there's a difference in manifestations for potentials because i've had such a unanimous showing of everyone loving those visuals i am taking the time to add those back in okay so we are going to transition to um, that portion of the video here in a second but I want to talk about eclipses because besides all of this energy going on with Jupiter and the planets moving through Sag and birthdays, which we'll also talk about, there's also eclipse season that's beginning again. And it's really hard to believe that we're back in eclipse season so quickly. Twice a year, we have what I call eclipse season. So four to six weeks before eclipses start and um, four to six weeks after is this you know, a period of time where massive changes, major trajectory switches, major culmination or coming to fruition of things worked on, you know, major endings, triumphant new beginnings are all increased in possibility. Some people who, some people will experience the eclipses as they're holding space for other people as they are um, having changes, but many of the people will be the ones having the changes and some of you will be holding space for others while you're having changes at the same time. So I want to talk about where these first eclipse, even though the eclipses are in January, I want to talk about them now because the end of November is four to six weeks before the eclipses. So all of December is hot time for eclipse news to come in. So I'm going to show you on the charts where you can see um, or where you can experience the eclipses for early, middle, and late degree placements. So we'll go into that and a whole bunch of other stuff. Hello, Sagittarius friends, and happy birthday to most of us. Um, my birthday is December 16th, so I am celebrating birthdays with you all. If you are a December-born Sag, then you will be having your solar return this month. I've had such an overwhelmingly positive 
excitement about my using these charts as visuals, so I'm including this in the new format so that you can see the early, middle, and late degree charts. You can see what I'm talking about. If you haven't figured it out already, I will tell you straight up, I am a teacher of astrology. That is my greatest love. I want to help people understand the potentials, but also understand why. I want to, I have, I guess you could say, my secret maniacal plot to help co-create an astrologically literate populace. Okay, so now you're in on my big secret. So these charts are going to help. So if you're not interested in learning astrology, you can still learn lots of great things about what, how um, astrological cycles and how you can use the energy this month and beyond um, and all kinds of things. But I do cater to the person who wants to learn more about this astrology, beautiful art and science. Okay, so now that all that's said, we've got an early, middle, and late degree chart. Which for my understanding, most astrologers use one chart, and usually it's an early or a late or a, um, early or a middle degree chart. So those late people often get um, left out of the equation, and sometimes there are details, especially with things like eclipse placements and outer uh, trans outer planet transits and even new moons and full moons that can be different depending on whether you're an early, middle, or late degree placement. Okay, so let's figure this out. Just right, get it done from the beginning. If you are a November born Sag, you are an early degree placement. If you are, an, and also if you're watching for your rising or sun, zero degrees through nine degrees, okay? Your middle degree, if you're about December 1st through 10th, or 10 degrees through 19 degrees, if you're watching for your rising or moon. And then late degree placements, you are 11 through the rest of the sign, and 20 to 29 degrees if you're watching for your rising or moon. Okay, so now you can figure out, depending on where your birthday is, then you can see where you fit into these, these designations. So now we're going to talk about a whole bunch of things. Let's talk about birthdays first, okay? Because birthdays are, birthday wishes are astrological. Many things are astrologically based that astrology doesn't get credit for. If you ever wonder, where did the idea of the birthday wishes come from? You know, that was from astrology. <laughs> Nobody ever gives it credit. So I'm going to be loud about it, okay? So yay for astrology. So when the sun in the sky gets back to the same point that it was at when you were born, that's called a solar return. That happens every year. I always like to think of this, um, this here is a running track in the sky and all the planets are moving through the running track in the sky at their own pace, true to them. The moon I always call the athlete who runs around in 28 days. Pluto I always call the, the old guy who had a hip replacement who's trudging around taking 240 years to move around. And then everyone else is somewhere in between and the sun takes a year. So, when the sun gets back to the same point that it was at when you were born, a portal for your desires is opened because the sun represents desire. The sun in the chart, the sun in astrology represents your desire. And so when that desire portal is open, that gives you a, a good launching pad for wishes to be heard and um, granted. Okay, so definitely to ma maximize your wishes, Look up my video. If you just search for Annie making wishes come true, I think it will come up. You might have to put in Botticelli, but I'm pretty sure if you put Annie making wishes come true in a search, you'll pull up my video um, on how to use astrological power periods to help you with your wishing to make changes in your life. Okay, so happy birthday, fellow Saggies. I will be celebrating with you. Okay, so the next thing to know about Sag is <laughs> we are so excited about Jupiter being in our sign, are we not? So if you haven't listened to my November report, I talked all about Jupiter moving through the houses and some with the sign. Sorry for the very loud plane. Probably you can hear that. Anyway, um, so definitely listen to the November report to hear more about Jupiter's movement into Sag. But the party continues. Okay, so yes, Jupiter is going to make some trouble for some people. It's going to amplify some problems. If it crosses over a personal planet in your chart, it can make some ruckuses that are not cool. But for the most part, Jupiter in our sign, especially in Sagittarius, because Jupiter is um, the ruler of Sagittarius, 
is an expansion party of ultimate proportions. So if you've wanted to break out of a matrix or do something with your life or have things you've been working on forever come to fruition, then for many people, the time is going to be now. I had lots of questions from the November um, report. I must have said something to make you middle and late degree placements think that you had to wait for Jupiter blessings. You don't have to wait for the Jupiter blessings. I'm a late degree placement and I've already been feeling Jupiter blessings that I know to recognize to be certainly Jupiter blessings coming in in October. And it's not, it hasn't even gotten there yet. <laughs> That's the time of, of, of my recording this. So no, you don't have to wait for Jupiter's blessing. It's just when Jupiter does get to your middle later degree placement, then it can expand things even more. Okay, so staying grounded during this transit is going to be a challenge. And so for the whole year, we have this to look forward to. And for the month of December, you'll probably notice that it's very difficult to stay grounded more than usual because all the planets moving into Sagittarius are adding oomph to our scattered, um, busy nature. So you're going to want to travel. You're going to want to write and create and publish and read and speak and just like spill your sadness all over the place. And there will be lots of opportunities to do that. I'm going to talk about some great launching points when I get into the general transit, my favorite dates for the month, um, when Jup Jupiter is going to be making some magical lineups, <clears throat> bringing some really amazing luck and en enhancement. So if you've been waiting through the retrogrades to launch your things towards the end of, sa of um, December, there's definitely opportunities. Okay, so Jupiter, yay, Mercury is going to get back into Sag. It had gotten there and then it retrograded, so yay. Um, so we've got a, a big Sag party. All right, what else do we have going on? We have eclipses. So we're going to talk about the eclipses because, oh wait, one more thing. Something to remember about this time of year, and this will be true every year, is that when the planets that are moving into Sag, move into Sag, they kiss your Sag planets. So the more Sag planets you have, the more kisses you get. So that's part of why things can really light up for you at this time of year, because you're getting all of this extra boost from the, the personal planets making conjunctions, which are, you know, where they're crossing right over your Sag planets. Okay, so that's just something to note that it makes you more on fire at this time of year. Okay, so back to the eclipses. There are two eclipses in January, January 5th and January 21st. We're going to talk about the manifestations for the January 5th one in this December report, and I'll talk about the 21st um, eclipse in the January report because I want them to each have their time and separate them that way. But we're also going to talk about the January 5th one because you will very likely feel the manifestations of this in December. I will get questions, Annie, why are you talking about this now? And the answer is, I'm saying this clearly again, an eclipse is as, as an astronomical event happens on one day. An eclipse as an astrological event happens for a wider orb of time, okay? So four to six weeks easily we can start to see major manifestations from eclipses. And eclipses bring major radical changes, major changes in trajectory, where we're going in one direction, and all of a sudden, whoop, we're going in this direction. Or we actually set out on a planned direction that we have been planning for this time, and it goes according to plan. So a lot of this is going to be centered around the energy of business and work and place out in the world and father figures and relationships with fathers and authority figures. And that's true for every sign because the solar eclipse is at 15 degrees of Capricorn, okay? So there's this story of work and work advancement and work enhancement and new opportunities and moving for work or moving because you have work and have more money. Lots of changes to home and family are going to be occurring over the next couple of years. So 2018 through 2020 is when we have this cap cancer cycle. We started... Um, in the middle of 2018 with this cycle, major restructuring to home and family, and that focus is going to continue between now and the middle of 2020. Solar eclipses tend to bring in new opportunities, new beginnings. Often other things have to go away, um, you know, because that's the, the eclipse cycles show us in, in very um, strong form that 
idea that we can never create nor destroy energy, that it just changes form. So at eclipse time, it changes form in a more visible way. Something very visible goes away. Something not, you know, something else comes in to fill that space. So major, major changes coming and you can start to see them um, as soon as even November. The end of November is very strong with the energy. And there could be stories that started in the summer of 2018 that are starting to get more active. The way I like to explain these eclipse cycles is that the potentials for the eclipse cycle can manifest anywhere in the couple of years that, you know, that the transits are happening, that the eclipses are happening. But when they, during the, the twice, twice a year time periods where they're actually happening, that's like a hot spot. But things can happen anywhere along the continuum throughout the year, even when it's not eclipse time, you're moving along a continuum in those areas of life. So it's going to be the home and family um, things that are really shuffling. And then we'll look at where it's going to hit in the chart. Okay, so let's get that out of there. So 15 degrees of Capricorn is going to hit for you early degree placements in the second house. For you middle degree placements, it's right on the line there. So it can be first or second or both. And then the late degree placements, that's really pretty much in the first. Although some of you may, especially the earlier late degree placements, may have some whispers there. So, so there still could be some manifestations there for you too. And because the energy of Taurus, which is the second house, is very similar to the energy of Capricorn, which is business, you, you know, you could wind up seeing second house manifestations at the same time as the first house manifestations. And that's very common, okay? So we'll just talk about the differences here. All Sages, but especially early and middle, have a very strong chance of having a new income stream, new money coming in. We are going to let you guys in the late area have that possibility, okay? Because like I said, there are some other factors. Even if the eclipse isn't actually there, there are other ways that it can come in and wind up bringing you more money. But for the early and middle, it's very clearly in this energy of having a new um, boost of self-esteem where you see your worth in a greater way. Um, you know, people will who do interviews will often say that they know who they're going to hire from the time they walk in the room and of success and money in life. Not always, but a lot of times it has to do with somebody's confidence and certainty that they deserve that, um, you know, what, what they're asking for or what they're hoping to get. So sometimes this, this house, which rules that self-esteem that then also gets the financial, you know, there's, there's a relationship here in this second house. It's the self-esteem, self-value, and then that translated out into financial, like actual financial income. Okay, so new income, new income streams for many of you, very, very likely. Um, new self-esteem also could be new uh, material items. The purchase of a large ticket item that really enhances your life can be something that happens. And if you have to make any large purchases, the end of December and January and early February hold lots of great times for that. So enhancing your life in some ways. For those of you who are on the track of trying to live more simply or live more in line with the earth, ways to do that can come from the solar eclipse as well. So living off the grid, getting solar, you know, getting a, a hybrid, something that makes you feel or is really living more in sync with nature and the natural rhythms um, can also occur from this. For your later degree placements, there is that chance, of course, for the financial manifestation as well. But this has to do with still from where it's placed in, in, in the chart for you. This redoing of your physical body, so new physical health. If you've been having health problems, this could be a new chapter in your health and wellness and your vibrance. This can have to do with how you present yourself to the world. So wardrobe, hair changes, things like that. Um, and if you have been listening to my Venus retrograde information and you've been holding off on anything radical with your hair or your body, then it is a better time towards the end of December and in January and February when we're free of the personal planets retrograde. And actually in, in January, not too soon into, I mean, not too late into January, we start a freedom from all planets being retrograde, which is a very rare thing. 
So things are definitely going to be speeding up and moving forward in a really big way. Um, so in general, the, the things that are being, or the arenas that are being aspected for the cycle between 2018, middle of 2018 and 2020, have to do with this story of your individual finances versus your joint finances. So your money versus like a partner's money, family money, business money. Also the seen realms versus the unseen realms. Um, restructuring of money like inheritances, sweepstakes. This cycle can bring in some money. I mean, really this like over these years of this money, things being restructured here. And that's going to be true to some degree for all Sages, early, middle, and late. And even for you later degree placements where these, um, to move this where this is going to be hitting more um, like between the first and second and the seventh and eighth the first and second have to do with me me and my stuff okay and then the seventh and eighth have to do with we us and our stuff so all sages early middle and late are having this story of me versus we be reshuffled in a big way. So you'll see over these years, and I'm sure you've noticed already, going deeper into relationship and resources with your um, partner. Oh, see, going deeper into um, you know things with your parents, um, borrowing money, loaning money, finding venture capital. You know, getting the financing you need to for your dreams. It's an amazing period of time. Um, being very much activated now and for an extended period of time of having access to the money that you need to do the things that you want to do and balancing your independent nature with merging deeper with other people through the combination of resources. So that's a major thing that's going on. Okay, so those are the things that are most on my mind for Sages. Now let's look at those dates that I love for launches. I'll give you some things to look out for um, and some other things you need to know about the general transits. So the theme of December 2018 for all signs is ready to soar. Besides Jupiter getting deeper into Sagittarius, there are other reasons why this is the month that we have been waiting for for such a long time. So this is the month that the long retrograde focus is finally ending. Most of the year of 2018, we've had personal planet retrogrades back to back and coinciding with each other. So even though the retrograde influences will still linger for most of the month, you'll definitely feel the cloak of retrograde energies becoming lighter and finally being removed at the end of the month. So Mercury is direct early in the month, December 6th. This change in directions coincides with the Sagittarius new moon, uh, which we'll also talk about. It will take until December 18th for Venus to be done with its, its um, post-shadow period. Okay, so after December 18th, the Venus retrograde energy is completely done. Um, but every day leading up to that, it's gone more and more anyway. And then December 25th is when the post-transit Mercury shadow period completely dissipates. And then we're going to be opening up into this brilliant and very rare period in January 2019 where every planet will be moving direct. So this is a really big time. So I've got some dates to note that we're going to go into details about, but in general, this month is about breaking free, being ready to soar, having liftoff, and we will have some things to look out for. And I will go into the details of that. So in general, well, actually, before I go into the details of this month, the dates to watch, remember that you can get a more in-depth and written version of these general transits when you sign up for my free email newsletter at AnnieHelpsYou.com. Okay, so you get all of the um, general transit reports a month early, like I do all my horoscopes, via email when you sign up for my free email newsletter. So if you want to be kept up to date for your planning and have a written version, uh, then definitely go there. Okay, so we start out the month. So here I've got our visuals. We're going to look at Venus and Uranus 
Okay, so we're just kind of ignoring the rising energy. This isn't, we're not focusing on houses in this reading. We're just focusing on the relationship between the planets because it's a general reading, okay? So Venus rules love and money. And whenever we have Venus opposing Uranus, we're generally in for surprises involving love and money. Sometimes they can be great surprises like a chance romantic encounter or a heating up of your love life in some other way or awesome money that comes out of nowhere, which also could coincide with having to work more, which could bring overstimulation or just the surprise factor of money coming in can be, um, you know, <laughs> a little overwhelming. Um, but it can also bring financial and love surprises that aren't welcome. So a fight with your beloved, you know, a, a, an expense um, or some other challenging financial news. Generally, the things that happen with these Venus-Uranus oppositions are quick to blow over. So if there's a fight, usually it will pass quickly. You know, if there's a surprise with money, it usually tends to settle its way out pretty quickly. Um, but do be aware that this transit that actually occurs on November 30th, on December 1st, is when these... Um, surprise energies are more common. And whenever I give you exact dates, remember that the transits don't always manifest as far as our experience of them on the exact date that they happen. So days before 12-1 and days after 12-1, you could experience this, um, these shocks or surprises. Okay. So those are, that's the first thing to look out for this month. Something in general for the month of December to watch out for or to be aware of is that we've got a ton of Sag energy. This brings upliftment. This Mercury is going to move into Sag, so we've got these three planets moving in Sag, making aspects with each other. Um, and I'll talk about some, some of the dates that are really amazing from these uh, getting together. But... The general energy of busyness, of travel, of learning, of teaching, people who are in the teaching businesses um, or speaking or publishing could be lighting up like the 4th of July for every sign. Um, anything having to do with international travel plans or long distance travel plans can be heated up here. Anything with languages, international business, anything like that. So, uh, and, and in general, optimism, busyness, running around um, and kind of possibly exhausting yourself, which now we move into this, this talk here. Okay. So all these sad energies are going to be, be here, bringing all this busy stuff in. And then at some point, each of these are going to be making squares, squares, 90 degree angles, challenging, could be stressful, um, with these Pisces planets. So the way I always see that, and I have a very personal look at this because I have a ton of planets in Sag myself, and I tend to run myself to exhaustion. So a lot of that is going to be a theme of this month, running yourself to exhaustion. And the Pisces planets are going to be calling out for rest. <laughs> Zs. You want to get more sleep and you want to get more rest. So this extroverted, busy energy is going to be competing with this sleep and rest and kind of a dreamy, artistic flow, emotional energy. So you'll see throughout the month points where those um, conflict. And if you take the warning to rest, you can save yourself from the overexhaustion and try to find a perfect balance, which ultimately, you know, these 90 degree angles can help you do. So rest is going to be in order. Busyness is going to be in order. And that's going to be a big theme of the month. Okay, so let's look at some other aspects here that um, were going to be important. So Mercury is going direct, as we said, on the 6th. So expect some awkwardness there as Mercury changes um, direction. And then the shadow period runs until 1225. On 1218, we have Venus post-transit shadow period finishing off. So then Venus is clear. OK, 
Okay, and then on December 6th and 7th, 7th, depending on your time zone, we've got the new moon in Sagittarius. That's going to be at 15 degrees. And so new beginnings and time to make your new moon wishes in all of the areas of everything Sag, which we talked about before. Um, Different countries, languages, cultures, teaching, learning, travel, international work, also spiritual or religious projects, writing, publishing, speaking. There's going to be an aspect with Mars and Neptune bringing an extra dreamy energy. See, Mars and Neptune are going to be together at the time of that new moon. Um, And some things that come in may feel like they're too wonderful to be real. Very dreamy energy there. We're also going to have this time, as Mercury is still in Scorpio, trining Chiron. And that's going to be on 12-9, which is in the extra sweetness, healing, um, solutions are more likely to roll in at that time. December 20th, mark a big, a big star in your calendar for the days around December 20th through the 22nd. Okay, we're going to really... 1220, 1221, 1222. What happened there? There we go. Because on those days, first we're going to have the sun trine Uranus. Okay, so it's going to make 120 degree angle, the most favorable in all astrology. So a boost to anything and everything, this could bring happy surprises. It's more likely to bring happy surprises. Also, Venus is making a beautiful aspect at that time with Neptune. And one of the biggest things is that this Mercury is going to come and make this conjunction with Jupiter, which very often brings enhanced luck good news, amazing things in the areas of Sagittarius that we mentioned. And so I'm putting this day in this period of time as my favorite launch days of the month. So even though, like I had said, Mercury doesn't regain its full strength till 1225, the days that are just before that have so much beautiful energy. So if you have to bust something out, Um, these days could be perfect for that. There'll be more time in January and into February if you're not quite ready, but there's an amazing energy about, you know, uh, busting forth at this time. Okay, so on December 22nd, we have a full moon at almost one degree of Cancer. And there's a little challenge with Mars and also some sweet aspects um, working at one with Uranus. But in general, that full moon can bring lots of family awesomeness. There is a chance for a little bit of conflict with the Mars and also a Chiron aspect. But many people will have amazing family fruition, fun, you know, emotional, mostly for the good, but there could be some little tweaks in there, but just typical holiday family awesomeness, very likely around that time. Okay, so... Then there are some other aspects um, towards the end of the month, which is, let's see, 1228. We've got another sweet aspect with Venus. See, during this month, Venus is going to come and make a nice aspect to Saturn, and then Venus is going to make a nice aspect to Pluto. So this is going to be really good for... um, sweetness in your relationship. This can be really great for good news involving work and money. So there are lots of uh, great boosts involving Venus, which is uh, perfect because we're clear of the Venus retrograde energies and um, everybody's pretty much raring to go. Okay, so those are the things that I most wanted to talk about for the general transits. Definitely mark those (laughs) dates in your calendar for really great energies.
So then we will head into January just really with a legitimate feeling of a new year. If you've been listening to my reports for years, you know that I talk about certain Januaries because of certain transits, not really feeling like a new year. Uh, but this January is really going to feel like a new year. And all of these things in December are leading up to that open energy. So we love that. Something else that is important to note if you are a holiday shopper, that because the energies from Mercury are still strong at the beginning of the month, it actually favors last minute shopping. So the closer you're getting to the holiday times, uh, the more energy, uh, more, more clear the energy will be. Okay, so just so you have that heads up for holiday shopping. The, the late, later part, the couple of weeks before the holiday times are best for shopping even compared to November um, and early December. Okay, so those are the things most on my mind for the general transits. So I hope you loved the added component of the visuals for the charts. If you would like to have my personal insights about your chart, then definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and book a live reading. If you resonate with how I teach astrology and you want to learn more for personal or professional purposes, if you'd like to be an astrologer or um, include astrology as part of your professional offering, then I am going to be enrolling now, December into January for the next run of my astrology apprenticeship program. So you can see that at AnnieHelpsYou.com plus lots of other offerings there. If you'd like written horoscopes by me for your sign each month, go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com. At CozyBySweetStarlight.com, I will write about things that some things that I mention in the videos, but sometimes I talk about other stuff that I don't cover in the videos. So you get more information about what the month looks like for you and plus great reads for each sign and lifestyle blogs by me and up and coming bloggers that I have on my site. If you're a traveler, then definitely check out my astrology travel reports, my monthly astrology travel reports at astrology kissed travel bliss at astrology kissed travel bliss.com. You get those monthly, um, travel astrology reports plus other travel blogs and lots of beautiful pictures on all of my sites so they're definitely something to see. If you're into tarot, you want to learn tarot, you want a tarot reading, then definitely check out my husband's work BR Newman at imhelios.com, I-A-M-H-E-L-I-O-S.com. You can check out his amazing offerings there. So I hope you have a wonderful month and a wonderful end to your year. And I'll see you next year. Bye.